So can we watch you at work for a minute? Yeah, sure. This is my wife. Oh. Hello. What is, right, what come on. And what do we got going on here? We got four Elvises. Can you just say your name and what you're doing here? Sure. How's it going? Great. Good to see you. You know, I'm kind of more excited to see everybody else because I don't think there's ever been this many good artists at once. I mean, this is this group of artists that are they're plucked from all over the world. Everybody knows what everybody's doing instantly, and I think it just brought everybody's game up globally. Now, how do you get these, like, insane lines? Nobody can draw a straight line. It's impossible, right? No, 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 right? Buddy. It's my job. Yeah. No, 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 she's, she's really good. Go like this. Good. With the whole body? Yeah. You know Karate Kid? Yeah. At the beginning, in the graffiti writing, I was like, That's this, all I saw. Yeah. and then I, this. Let's look at me, look at me, because you're not going to say this. Let me try it, I'm going to try it. You need to be straight. You see? Perfection. <laughs> and I'm fine. <five. laughs> How you doing, Ron? So what, what's the story with the, the weird things over the eye? Uh, I was born blind in my left eye. I don't see black. I have a rare condition. There's only, I think, 60 people in the world that have what I have. So say, for instance, I color this eye, I see gradients and hard lines, soft lines, no figurative form, and that is my representation. That's my left eye. Well, it's great to be an artist. You can make people see the way you see, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. That's, that's the struggle, you know. I was the first kid that they found this condition in, in America, when they were going to operate on me, and like, I think I was already under anesthesia, and Right when they're about to cut, my dad pulled the plug. Like, say you did have a successful surgery, do you think you'd even be an artist right now? I have no idea, you know, I mean, my, my eye's super color and light sensitive, and you know, my color palette is, you know, neons and bright colors, so who knows, you know, I'd probably be a football player. Football's loss is our game. <laughs> right? <laughs> what are you guys working on? Uh, this is our sustainable tree houses wonderland. <laughs> kind of. Lost Boys, uh, Peter Pan-esque, but... Don't grow up. Yeah, don't, don't grow up. Or maybe if you grow up, grow up into the trees. Right, if you grow up, <laughs> make sure you have half pipes still in your life and surfboards. And, uh, and we always are kind of going off the idea of this you know, off the grid, off the ground kind of treetop city. Ideally, it's a place that you would want to live, right? Um, because we can't afford to build it ourselves and we can paint it, you know? Yeah. It's um, definitely a favorite with, I'd say, the younger kids, for sure. It's like they'll come over and they'll be super stoked. So that makes us happy because maybe one of them will become rich and build it for us. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> engineers and yeah. contractors. Geared, geared towards architects and engineers. This piece behind us, some of the different ideas began with Gaia's desire to create a portrayal of uh, Lili Ukulani. I had initially made this piece and it was actually kind of offensive to um, some of the more aware artists in terms of Hawaiian culture because it had that like Carmen uh, Banana Republic vibe where she's got the whole cornucopia throat in her hair. So I wanted to make this notion of like agribusiness into tourism as a soft colonialism that you know is so ignored in terms of like what an occupational presence that has. It became like abundantly clear that I wouldn't be painting that as a mural. And rather than being like, oh, uh, white man, you know, whatever, they were like, hey, let's work on something together we can guide you. What came of that was, I think, more than just her alo or her face, she would want us to talk about all the things that she sacrificed herself for. And really, this understanding that there will come a better time when all indigenous people will return to a way of walking lightly on the earth. Their ancestors lived those stories and lived in harmony, and we're here today because they were so successful <laughs> at living in harmony with each other and the environment. I want us to be able to explore deep cathartic issues through the work but that look potentially beautiful and alluring so that people can democratically sort of have these conversations. And it happens a lot, so it's a great affirmation that this isn't like meaningless shit. <laughs> right. And it's also, you can tell you're hitting an audience that isn't like an art audience, which is brilliant. Oh, hell yeah. Probably since Diego Rivera got his piece painted over at the Rockefeller Center, there's been this schism between the public and art and it's finally closing again. So in a way, this is like a very historic moment. And I think the weird thing about this kind of art is not tied to the art world. You know, the art world kind of goes in fads. It's like now we're doing minimalism, now we're doing pop, now we're doing neo-expressionism. And usually they pick five or six people from that group and say, these are the ones, everybody else, you know, flushing the toilet, if you're not a big enough turd, fuck you. 
and then they're on to the next thing. But this isn't dependent on the art world. This is going to be a phenomenon that stays. 